Hey, what's up, my friends? We, I just did it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, friends? It's Travis and Chang, and we're hanging out with some long layers. We're gonna get into a curtain fringe today. It's gonna be super dope, so hang in. If you haven't already, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share this with all your friends. Let's spread the love on great long layers. Chang, let's get to the shampoo bowl so we can get started. Let's go. Now you're gonna see an asymmetrical uh, sort of switch right here from the off-centered profile parting to the dead center. And I'm gonna take that. And now we'll go ahead and clip everything up. We're gonna get into what's called a dropped perimeter horseshoe. And what that's doing is it's isolating what my layers are gonna be versus my length and separating the two. And all of that's gonna be measured out based upon the curvatures in our head and density reads. So. When I comb this down, what I'm looking at is how much skin do I start to see through here? So how much of the ear do we see? How much of the neck do we see? And I see more than I want to. So I'm gonna go just a little bit higher, say from the high recession, straight down that's better. And I'm gonna take this now, which is gonna become our layers and part of our face framing. We are basically gonna take our index fingers on both sides. I'm gonna measure that out on both sides there. Once I get that point of interest in there, let's go straight across with another horizontal parting, separating the, the uh, top from the sides here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go just a smidge higher right there. It's pretty much a traditional horseshoe in the front of the radial. And then where we're gonna mix things up is in this dropped perimeter horseshoe in the back. And this thing is pretty rad. It's combining a inverted V section in with sort of a section that starts to isolate the, uh, the rear recession behind the back of the ears. So I'll show you how to do it because if you don't watch closely on this one, it can be a little bit challenging. So back to that center profile here, making sure that's split left from right. I'm gonna take the bridge of my comb. I'm gonna rock this from the nape of her neck find the occipital bone, which is the first protruding bone on the back of the head. My index finger right now is at the mastoid process, right at the base of the ear, and the base of the skull on the back of the head. I'm gonna take a diagonal forward section, and I'm gonna connect the dots following the uh, hairline here. So parallel to the hairline, from this intersection here, parallel with the, the uh, hairline there, straight down to the bottom, and that starts to give me the first bit of this dropped perimeter horseshoe, which is gonna to start to look like a W in any second here. All right, so same thing on this side, diagonal forward towards the mastoid process from the occipital bone, and then parallel with the hairline here. We've got the dropped perimeter horseshoe in there. We're gonna build the baseline, which is the length of the haircut first. Like I said before, I'm gonna go with a flat line. I'm gonna cut it square to the head, sh head shape, and that way I've got a little bit more weight behind the back of the shoulders there. That's going to create over direction there, which when that pulls around the front of her shoulders, leaves the front just slightly longer than the back. Less weight in the front, less hair per square inch around the front. I think that's gonna be good because by the time that shrinks up a little bit, I think we're gonna see a parallel line to the ground and um, I think it's a better way to go. I'm probably gonna use a twist cut technique through it so I can get a real serrated edge at the same time. But let's see if we can get her up higher here. So I had to have Chang uh, stand up so that we could see the length in the frame here. I am gonna be using my Arc Paragon 2s. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna switch to my curves because uh, I'm gonna do a little inside out cutting here. We're gonna open and close the shears to remove length at the same time. I'm gonna gather a piece from the left and the right towards the center profile here. Let's create a contact point. And now from that contact point to the center profile there, I'm gonna cut any additional length off that doesn't file at the same point. So left and right once again. Hey, I'm gonna do a little 90 to over direct in the concave area of the head. And I don't know if you've ever experienced it before, but when your layers don't blend to your length and you get that gap in between, this is how you resolve it, and it's huge. And the reason it's happening is this part of the head is concave. It, it sinks in from the occipital bone through the nape of the neck and the spinal column. And when the layers fall over the protrusion of the convex area of the head, that pulls the hair up higher. So more hair per square inch underneath here, concave area of the head. But once again, this is how you resolve it. So I've got a profile section in there. I'm gonna go 90 from the occipital bone and everything's gonna over direct up from there. Uh, let's start with 90. I may go 180. Let's start with 90 first. Let's see. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go 180, just so I can get a little bit of a shorter blend in there. Let's go. Speaking of 180, turn her 180 to the camera there. Yeah, so all this additional length right here, this would otherwise meet this point at natural fall. And that's what we want to start to cut a little bit shorter. It will take some of the weight out of the bottom, so just be careful. Allow some of that hair to drop out. And we're gonna cut from a shorter to a longer point. Drop that through, and then these little hairs here will be shorter than the hairs underneath, and that will help to blend the layers to length. Shears go in, and then back up towards the ceiling. This always, uh, this is not really the issue where I find that the layers don't blend to length, but let's see where it's at. It does feel a little denser right here than it does on the sides, and that can actually start to divide the layers from the length too. So let's just comb it up. So now what I'm looking at is what folds behind the back of the radial. So radial right here. Remember we looked at the cowlick of the head. I want to see what falls over the back because that is going to be dictating, or not that that's going to be, but that's going to dictate where my shortest layer is going to be. Right now it's just below the base of her neck. Uh, it's about, maybe about 12 inches from the bottom of her haircut. Bag on a forward section. There's my shortest point right there. Let that drop out. So once again, scissor goes in and closing as I move towards the longest length there. So we can use upper direction in this last section at the back of the radio if we want to be careful of the hair at the rear recession right in here where there is no hair. Um, it's also where the ear is too. So red flag area, ears can get the hair to pop out. Cheng doesn't have some crazy Dumbo ears, so we're not really worried about it. <laughs> and so that said, I think I'm gonna keep everything on base. 90 to over direct from the center of the profile here. There's my shortest point. Looks like some of this has already been cut, so it hasn't. Once again, just blending that up to that longest point there. And at this point, we've knocked out the length of the haircut. We're finishing the second section on the back of the head. If you're vibing with this right now, give me a thumbs up, add a comment in there. I will personally respond to all your comments. Definitely subscribe to our channel. Hit that subscribe button right now. Cool, so that same section that I just checked right now to find symmetry on both the left and the right side will become a guide to length for everything that's happening in front of it. I talked about using over direction um, prior to uh, starting the haircut and I think I'm gonna keep everything on, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep everything on base. So I got a little bit more layers happening up towards the front of her face. If I was to over direct everything from the radial forward, back to the radio, I would just have more weight around the face. But again, I'm gonna get into a curtain fringe on her and I want more movement through the sides of her haircut. So I think I'm gonna stay on base, pushing all the way up, at least past the top apex, and we'll see what happens after that. Let's go ahead and start on this left side first. I think I'm maybe gonna go 90 to about 135, which is about right there. And same motion, so sort of in and out through those ends. Hey guys, I am switching to the right hand side or I finished the left side, I'm going over to the right side. I did stay on base all the way through. Um, it worked out, the lengths were longer than I thought. I'm gonna go with that for now. We need to carve more out, I will. Um, but what I am doing, just a second little guide to length is I took a little bit from that right, that left side, yeah, that left side that I just got. I'm throwing that over to the right side. So now I've got a guide to length coming from the profile here. And I've got the guide to length back behind the radio there as well. So I've got one that's horizontal, one that's vertical. 
and staying on base, my body is gonna stand at nine o'clock next to her right ear, 90 to 135. And once again, underneath my hand and just working that up towards that longest bit there. Again, we are building concave layers. This is going to be shorter layers to a really long length. A lot of these haircuts, again, are using convex layering. Convex layering would be if I put like a triangle on top of her head this way. We're going just the opposite. We're moving it this way. And as you can see, when I move my hands this way, they're further away from her head. And at that point of being further ahead or further away from her head, is at the parietal ridge on both sides. And that's gonna drape into longer lengths. So if you want more layers around the cheeks uh, and less connection all the way to the bottom, you're gonna wanna switch gears and do convex layers. All right, so just checking in, we finished the length of the haircut, we finished the layers in the haircut. Length, once again, was cut flat, square to the head shape. We used a twist cut technique. Layers were super organic, but we built concave layers, shorter to longer, cut underneath the hand there with C-shaped curvature movements, um, cutting from the inside out like that. Just helps us to get this real whipped sort of effect in the haircut. Uh, once again, just stabilizing the fact that I don't want it to look laser cut. I don't want it to look like we just put her into a 3D printer and print it out. That first thing I want to make sure I'm figuring out is where's the highest point of her head? Because from there, in addition to natural calyx and growth patterns and all that stuff, everything's going to move forward onto her face. So from there, if I turn her over to the side, I can start to see where my finger is, but also in alignment with the framing of her face, what falls over her ear versus what falls forward. If I was to take a diagonal forward parting from there, straight to the mid recession on both sides, and I allocate that towards my horizontal fringe on the top, I think I'm gonna be in a good spot. And then when I start to build the framing around the face, I'm gonna come about halfway in between these points here and build pretty much a vertical line, maybe slight diagonal forward there, uh, but pretty much a vertical line to start blending in that forward rad. Now, let's do the same thing on the second side here. Moving her hair around a little bit, I am gonna be pushing her hair forward when we style it and I wanna see where the hair is gonna live around her face. We clearly have a part there that was defined in the very beginning. Um, that will be where my shortest pieces are gonna go. And so from there, I wanna take a small triangular section within my triangular section here. And that's gonna be our shortest pieces. Cut it out. Now I'm gonna use a twist cut technique just like I did before um, in the back of the head, but up and through the front here. I'm gonna grab these pieces right over the part line here. Drop it over her eye, left, right, slightly opening and closing the shears. And as you can see, when I start to pull the shear up, that's when I'm closing it, that's when I'm removing length. Now, as I grab the piece next to it, I'm gonna, on the right-hand side here, I should say, I'm gonna pull it back to the profile so there's a slight bit of over direction in it. Same sort of motion in it, nice and slow. And this over direction is gonna allow that to cascade into a little bit of a longer piece just off the, the part line here. So now on the second side, I'm gonna do the same thing. Always over directing hair to the stationary section and standing on the side of that stationary section. Elevation's at zero degrees, so there's a little bit more weight in the section here.
And that's going to be all that I do right in there for now. Whether we cut a little bit more dry, we'll, we'll see. All right, so we knocked out the fringe. I combed everything teed apart on both sides. I stood on the opposite side, so I was pulling all the hair to me. Once I did that, I dropped hair over the cheekbones, the natural fall, and just made sure that everything blended from the shortest point to the longest point. Shoulder goes up. The tip of the non-moving blade is pointing towards the destination. Just slightly opening and closing the shear as I move from top to the bottom of this section. I've got everything done with the haircut. We finished the length of the haircut. We finished the layers in the haircut. We finished the face framing in the haircut. Multiple steps in the face framing there. Super fun. I'll throw everything in the description down below on what the steps are in the fringe there because again, there are some different um, steps in it that I think are going to play into finding success. And the more I can give you, the more you'll know when to shift gears based upon you know, placing this on your client. Um, but what I want to do now is right up and through here, I just feel like there's a little bit of heaviness in it and I'm going to internal channel cut. I'm going to comb the hair back to teeth apart here and shorter to longer, shorter pushes longer. And I just want to air this out just a little bit more and create a little bit more of a whimsical effect. Ooh, that's dope. Same thing on this side, except for now I'm going to come from uh, the top section here and the non-moving blades going to go underneath. I'm stoked. Chang, should we dry it? Yes. Let's try it. Yes. All right. Let's dry it. Let's see what we've got. I'm going to use a couple styling products in it. One is foundation from Mr. Smith. I'll show you what that is in just a second. And I'm going to use a dry texture spray at the very end. I'm going to use a flat iron in it to get some undulation and some wave to it. I don't want a ton of volume in her hair, but I want it to feel sort of slept in and sexy and sort of tousled and kind of more editorial. All right, so in general, I think the style came out legit. I did everything with a round brush. Um, it's not gonna be as sustainable with a round brush as it will be with an iron. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of an iron into it. But in general, the vibe of the haircut, I think it's freaking spot on. And if you agree with me, again, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Definitely follow us. We've got videos coming out every single month right now. But let's go into that step two of the style right now and let's lock this in so that Chen can wear it for not just today, but maybe for a couple days.